You give someone a shovel, they know what to do with it. No one told you how to put your shirt on this morning. You just knew. And that's how storage should be. Storage is a tool. Why should you have to learn how the internal combustion engine works to drive your car? You shouldn't, and you don't. And storage should be the same. The core value of Drobo is, is simplicity. Our, our core mission is preserve simplicity, and Beyond Raid is the vehicle that we do that through. So Beyond Raid is hands down the easiest rig to set up. You can configure a direct attach unit in easily under 10 minutes, and as a unit under 20 minutes without the problems at all. You just pull it up, pull it up the box, plug in the drives, and essentially it's done. And there's no other NAS as simple to configure. There's no other NAS as simple to manage. Mac users seem to be, for some reason, uh, connected with Drobo. Why is that? Why, why Mac rather than Windows? Is it a different kind of user? Well, we do have a lot of Windows users. It, you know, it's probably two-thirds, one-third is the split, uh, something like that. But I think, you know, Mac, Mac users... Sorry, is that two-thirds Mac? Two-thirds Mac, right. yeah. And Mac users really kind of value systems that just work. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's where Drupal plays too, right? It just works. And so that's, you know, it's, it's a premium brand. Uh, it's, it, it, it just works with Time Machine. It just works with the Mac. Obviously, it just works with Windows too. But I think that's why it really resonates more with, with, with Apple. They value the aesthetics. I mean, Drupal is a beautiful product. The chassis is made of metal. The cover is made of metal. No other unit in our price point is anything like that. They're all plastic and horrible. Um, <laughs> Most of our customers who don't want to put stuff in the cloud actually will buy two devices. And one device will back up to the other. Right. And what they will do is they will use a cloud backup service just in case something. So it's one of these services where it's, you know, $100 a year, it's mm. unlimited backup, and it's only for backup. Right. Uh, and then with regards to the cheap portable uh, device, you know, that thing's easy to lose. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what we've done is we've created a platform called uh, Drobo Access, which allows you to access your Drobo on any device, wherever you are in the world, and it acts as, it's like a, uh, a drive in your, on your phone. Right. And so you can access pictures, files, whatever you need on the go, email them through a link, uh, and uh, you know, it, it's just a super, super slick thing that we've come up with. And, and this is for both Android and iOS? Uh, yes. Okay. And Windows, phones, Blackberry and such like, are they vanishingly small and we don't care about them these days? Absolutely. Yeah. Tragic but true sub 50 employee companies where the company can't afford a full-time IT person right and so they need stores that's just easy to use you know a simple red yellow green light tells you whether the the drive is working or not and anybody can go in and eject a bad drive just like a cassette mm. and put in a new drive so again making it simple to use and making it cost effective uh, to use so where we're seeing the biggest growth is uh, especially in the U.S., is dental offices, chiropractic offices, where now they're starting to take x-rays in-house mm. rather than send it out, and they okay. need to back up that data. Right. Now, you know, these are small outfits that can't afford a full-time IT person mm -hmm. to be there every day. And so we see uh, value-added resellers install the stuff, and then if a drive needs to be replaced, the proprietor or somebody at the organization can do it themselves. Well, direct attach really just means it's directly connected to the computer. So right. it's a Thunderbolt or USB 3 today. iSCSI is essentially direct attach. It looks direct attached to the computer, even though it's over the network. Mm. And NAS, of course, is out in your network and it's shared. One thing that you don't seem to do is HDMI output, so your NAS also acts as like a video player. Yeah, it's, it's not that we don't care. It's just that we, we do see that as a relatively small niche thing. You know, obviously you can connect... Um, a, 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 an Apple TV or a Mac or a, or a, or a Windows uh, laptop or a, a small desktop as the output device. Um, and you can have multiple of those around the house. It's not that common, we feel, to have the NAS right next door to your television no, or, right. or, 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 your, or your display device. It is actually quite easy to do. Um, it's just that we don't feel it's something that's, that's going to be that, that popular and that common. The business of the focus is with so many NAS companies on uh, apps. But we have somewhere in the region of 30 or 40 apps right now. Mm. Uh, and where our competitors have, you know, 300 apps. But the reality is 250 of those apps are completely weird and useless and no one knows what the heck they do. So we aren't going to do that. Drobo is not going to be a, a company that gives an enormous number of things that confuses people. So we, we pick apps that are highly targeted to what we think our customer needs. And we, we meet a lot of customers. I think he has met over 400 end user customers this year. I do a lot of trade shows too. And that's how we try to figure out what they need. You know, we have apps like Plex and Pitor and Sync that are supported by, the, by, by an active partner. We also have a few open source apps, and we try to keep blend there of, 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 of those two types of apps. And we're always looking for high quality and easy, easy to use. That's our core value. It drives every decision we make, top to bottom in the company. It has to be easy to use. 
NAS is still wedded to three and a half inch hard drives in practice. How long do you see this being the case? That's a million dollar question. I think um, right now it's about 10x the price of an NAS. You can buy, uh, sorry, um, SSDs to hard mm. drives. It's about two and a half, three cents um, for a gigabyte on hard drives and 22 to ish, up to 28, 30 for um, a put cents per gigabyte on, on flash. I think uh, you're going to see flash come down quite quickly, but I'm guessing it's going to be a couple of years before you see a crossover. Uh, but it's not just a crossover, right? It's not really interesting that I can buy a 500 gig SSD cheaper than a 500 gig hard drive because I need a four, five, six terabyte mm. device. So what's important is that not only that crossover on the price, but capacity as well. Mm. So I think you're probably looking at three to four years before you start to see 2020 kind of time frame. before you start to see six, eight, 10 terabyte flash devices that are cheaper than the right. equipment hard drives. Now by then, of course, you have much bigger hard drives, so you still have the same. Do you think so? Do you I'm not think the hard drive capacity is more or less stalled? Um, no, I think next year you're going to see 20 terabytes. I think 12 is around really? the corner. What will we see in the way of NAS that's going to make us perk up and take interest that's going to be different to what we see today? Well, one of our big focuses is, on, is going to be on building solutions with, with partners. So, uh, you know, rather than just saying there's a black box, do something with it, we're going to start to help people understand how they can use the NAS. That's going to be a big focus. Uh, we are going to see some changes on the... Ethernet performance, uh, and, and, and as I said earlier, we're going to really build up that app e ecosystem with, with apps that really help our customers customize their NAS the way they need it to be. Your Swish NAS that connects to Macs and such like, does that also mean you can, for example, start catering to film production? Well, we already have, I think mm. you're talking really about iSCSI, we mm. already have I, iSCSI units and, and, and uniquely in the market, they have all the features of Beyond RAID. You know, you're, we aren't just a NAS provider, we do provide direct attach. And our direct attach units can have all the expandability and flexibility that our NAS units have, and that's completely unique. Nobody else has that. So, yeah, we, we do see a growth there. We already have, uh, we have at least one customer I know that has, I think, 21 uh, BA10Is in a video production studio. Do you give a damn about the type of connection that goes to your device? Well, you mean Drobo as a company? Or as a customer, I mean, a customer cares because... Both, actually, though, but from both ends. Well, because, a, because, I mean, particularly with the Apple side of things, because Apple has a habit of removing ports and connectors and insisting, yeah. congratulations, you're now wireless. Um, and that's it, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's, that's fait accompli. So, both sides of that. Yeah, I mean, as a customer, the main choice you have to make between NAS and Direct Attach is performance. Right now, NAS is obviously limited by the gigabit Ethernet. As 2.5 and 5 gigabit Ethernet comes into the home, that will change a little bit. 10 gigabit is still too expensive for home by a long way. Mm. Um, and then direct attach like Thunderbolt and USB 3 are much, much faster, uh, you know, 10x faster. So if you want to do multiple 4K video streams, really you need to be on something like a Thunderbolt or a really good USB 3 system. And uh, obviously Thunderbolt 3, I'm expecting. I mean, no one knows for sure. I have no inside track on that, but my guess is in October we'll see some Macs with Thunderbolt 3. Right, understood. I think that's pretty much covered everything. Um, thank you very much, chaps. I'm Lee Awarded for Kit Guru. These are the men from Drobo.